So hello class, welcome to the online session. We are going to discuss the histology of the endocrine organs. So let us start with the pituitary, uh, the parathyroid gland. Okay. So the the slide that we have would be uh, majority of the areas would be the thyroid gland, and then on this side. Uh, we would see the lymph node. So these are the thyroid follicles. We have to uh, look at other areas, at other areas. This one would be a, another lymph node. So the parathyroid gland is this one. Okay, so it is. Adjacent to the thyroid gland, there are two pairs, a total of four, uh, four parathyroid glands. And there are two cell types that would be present. So the main function of the parathyroid gland is to produce the parathyroid hormone, which is secreted when there is hypocalcemia. So on a higher power magnification, we can appreciate the lobulated clusters of the cells these are what we call as the principal cells or the chief cells which would uh, contain round nuclei which would be uniform to all of the cells the cytoplasm would be uh, clear moderate sometimes we would see some granularity so these are the cells that would produce the parathyroid hormone or the PTH and would have a secretory, secretory function. The other uh, cell is what we call as the uh, oxyphil cell. They are a little bit larger than the chief cells of the principal cells and they are identified uh, with their acidophilic or red cytoplasm. So this would be the uh, this would be the oxyphil cell. Next would be the thyroid gland, which uh, from that particular slide, we have identified already the thyroid gland. This is the other slide for the thyroid gland. Okay. <clears throat> so the thyroid gland is located on the anterior neck, and it would be composed of two lateral lobes, the left and the right, which would be connected by the, th uh, by the isthmus. So there are uh, two cells or two cell types that would be present uh, in the thyroid gland. We have the follicular cells, which are the ones that would line the follicles. And then we have the parafollicular cells. So the follicular cells are either simple cuboidal or low, uh, or low columnar. And they are the ones that would produce the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. So the, the follicle would also contain the parafollicular cell, which is found within the confines of the basal lamina so this may be the parafollicular cells they are the ones that do not line the uh, the, the lumen of the follicle uh, although in the book it says that it is difficult to identify for the parafollicular cells but the parafollicular cells are situated <coughs> within the epithelium but does not line the uh, the lumen so most probably these are the parafollicular cells. The parafollicular cells would secrete or produce uh, calcitonin, which would counteract the action of the parathyroid hormone, which is uh, to increase calcium levels. Okay. Uh, the colloid, which is found within the follicle or the follicular lumen, is uh, acidophilic. And it contains thyroglobulin, which is the inactive storage form of the thyroid hormone. Okay, so I'll just um, 
look into the other areas so that you can get acquainted with the slide okay so this would be the thyroid gland so next we have the pancreas so we have discussed already the pancreas um, in the uh, digestive system what we have to identify here would be this cluster of cells which we would call as the islet of Langerhans. So this would be the endocrine uh, portion of the pancreas. So basing on uh, Asian stain, it's very difficult to us to differentiate the different cell types present. So there are three cell types present. And we can only differentiate them based on their staining quality with Mallory Azan stain. So the beta cell would comprise majority of the cells here, which would be uh, which would be 60 to 70 percent of cases, and it produces insulin. The alpha cell would uh, comprise 15 to 20 percent and would produce the glucagon. The delta cell or the D cell comprises only 5 to 10 percent and would produce the somatostatin. somatostatin. So the B cell or the beta cell would have a brown orange color on Mallory Azan. The alpha cell or the A cell would color red and the delta cell or the D cell would color blue. Okay. So next slide we have the pituitary. So this one is a small organ but we uh, it would have several regions we are going to discuss a lot about this thing and this particular organ so the pituitary gland is situated at the cella torsica okay at the base of the skull and it would be divided into two lobes we have the anterior lobe which is this area and this is what we call as the adenohypophysis and then we also have the posterior lobe which is in this area and this is uh, uh, also called the neurohypophysis so the uh, portion of the adenohypophysis that we would see in this slide would be the parastistalis this is the uh, this would form the bulk of the pituitary uh, of the adenohypophysis or even the pituitary gland and then we have the parasitary media here which would be identified with the cystic structures uh, and then for the posterior lobe we identify only the pus uh, the pars nervosa okay so let's go with the pars distalis so the pars distalis would be uh, composed of uh, a lot of cells and the cells are very very important they are identified based on the staining quality uh, of their cytoplasm so the cells here um, can be the chromophobe which are identified by uh, the clear cytoplasm okay? and they would comprise 50 percent so there are a lot of them that's 50 percent and then we have the that's a chromophobe for the acidophil easily identified because of their eosinophilic cytoplasm they comprise 40 percent and there are two cells cell types that would be falling under the acidophil we have the somatotrop which would produce the growth hormone and then we have the lactotrop which would produce the prolactin uh, for the uh, for the basophil uh, it would comprise only around 10% of cases. Um, it's not very clear uh, on the basophil cell uh, because some of them uh, do not possess that uh, grossly appearing basophilic character of cytoplasm. So it can be this one okay, or this one. See, because of the basophilic cytoplasm 
And there are three cell types that would fall under this category. We have the corticotrope, which uh, would produce the ACTH. Uh, and then we have the gonadotrope, which would produce the FSH and LH. And then the last is the thyrotrope, which would produce the TSH. Okay. So, uh, the other uh, region of the adenohypophysis would be the one that would contain the cystic structures. So, they would say that this would contain colloid, although that is not uh, the material that would be uh, that would be seen in the thyroid gland. So, uh, this would be the pars intermedia. Okay? And then, this is the pars nervosa, which would contain unmyelinated axons. Okay? So, again, unmyelinated axons. And you can see the presence of cells. Okay? So, the cells that would contain the, uh, that would contain the uh, nucleus. So, these are what we call as the pituicides. Okay? Pituicides. There's also the aggregates of neurosecretory vesicles, okay, which we would call as the herring bodies. So these herring bodies are dilations that would be uh, uh, composed of aggregates of neurosecretory vesicles. They would contain either the oxytocin or the ADH or the vasopressin. So they are identified with a yellow uh, yellow staining quality, although in the book it says that it has an eosin okay? Eosin staining quality. It means that it's acidophilic. Although in this case it's colored yellow. Okay? So this would be the herring bodies. Okay. Here. There's another aggregate. So this is a dilation, that's a herring body. Okay? And then our last slide would be the adrenal gland. So it is also, sometimes they would say that this is called the suprarenal gland because it is located on top of the kidney. There are two regions in the adrenal gland. Okay? We have the cortex and the medulla. Of course, you can see the uh, capsule uh, of the adrenal gland. This is a dense, irregular connective tissue. The cortex of the adrenal gland would then be further subdivided into three zones. The uppermost would be called the zona glomerulosa. Okay, let's look at it in a high power magnification. There. Okay. So you can distinctly separate them, the cells, from the lower zone. Okay, so this would be the zona glomerulosa. It will produce or it produces the mineralocorticoid or the, or the aldosterone. And then the, this would account for only 15% of the makeup of the cortex. For the uh, next zone, it is called the zona fasciculata. This is the one at the center. This accounts for 80% of, uh, uh, of the cortex of the adrenal gland. So, if you're going to look at it, it would be composed of plump cells. Okay? So, they are polygonal to plump cells. They would contain uh, some vesicles in it and they are the ones that would produce glucocorticoid uh, the cortisol and a few of them would produce gonadocorticoids consisting of the DHEA the DHEAS and the androstenedione and the last zone would be the one that is situated near near the edge of the cortex and the medulla this would be the zona reticularis which accounts only for five to seven percent of the entire cortex and it would 
uh, produce uh, nanocortico uh, corticoids uh, in larger quantities than that of the zona fasciculata and smaller quantities of the glucocorticoid or the cortisol. So, more or less, the zona fasciculata and reticularis have the same function, but they have different uh, quantification of their secretion. Okay. And then the, uh, the inner region would be what we call as the medulla. So, the medulla would contain cells that we call as chromaffin cells. So, highlighted by their, uh, they are highlighted by the basophilic cytoplasm. Okay. And these cells, uh, they would sometimes be called as pale staining. And the chromaffin cells are actually modified neurons. They would produce or secrete catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine. So do you know this particular cell? This one? This has an acidophilic staining quality of the cytoplasm. Uh, this is larger than the chromaffin cells. This is what we call as the ganglion cell. So you see a ganglion cell in the adrenal medulla. Okay? So those are the slides that uh, would fall under the endocrine uh, organs. So I hope that you stay safe. Always uh, bring your mask when you go outside. Still the ECQ. Okay, so stay safe and good night.